Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about how to plan the perfect Disney resort day. Now that term resort day is thrown around a lot when you're planning your Disney vacation, but what exactly does it mean and how do you make the most of a Disney resort day? So that is what we are gonna be talking about. Before we dive in, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps the algorithm to let YouTube know that you're enjoying my videos. And make sure that you're subscribed if you're not already. I would love for you to stick around for more Disney content. I have some Disney vlogs coming up soon, so make sure that you are subscribed. And let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Okay, so when it comes to planning a Disney resort day, there are obviously a lot of directions you could take a day like this. And depending on what your family's preferences are, it could look different for everybody. So some people want the relaxing, chill by the pool, do nothing kind of day, and just take naps and rest. And then other people want to pack as many activities as possible in and see and do as much as possible at their resort. So there's all kinds of ways you could plan this kind of day. But Whatever your preferences are, I'm gonna share all of the options and ways you can make this day perfect for your vacation. All right, let's start with talking about pool days at Disney resorts because this is probably the most common way to spend a resort day. You sleep in, maybe you grab breakfast down at the quick service, or if there's a table service that serves breakfast at your resort, that's the perfect way to kick off a resort day in my opinion. And then you head down to the pool, you hang out there for the whole morning, you grab lunch at the quick service or the pool bar, and you're just hanging out all day long. Maybe you head back up to the room for a nap, and then you shower, get cleaned up, and go to a really fun dinner that evening. Maybe it's a character meal or a signature meal, but something really memorable for the day. So there's one way, right? You could spend a Disney pool day. Another way is if you are staying at the Yacht and Beach Club, the Contemporary or the Grand Floridian, you can actually rent a private cabana for the day. Now this would definitely be a splurge in my opinion. So I'm just gonna read off everything that's included with these cabanas because it's pretty amazing. So you get a dedicated cast member providing service to your cabana, two padded lounge chairs, a sectional couch, a ceiling fan, a smart TV with cable. You get a fruit basket, a mini fridge stocked with complimentary sodas and waters, a snack basket and towel service. So pretty amazing if that's something that you want to splurge on. Maybe you replace your park tickets with a cabana. I mean, it pretty much is the same cost <laughs> if you're a couple. So it's definitely a way that you can make your resort day at the pool very memorable. Moving on to resort activities. Now there are a lot <laughs> of options here in this section, so I have a lot to share. Now this would be really for the family who maybe isn't into the pool or spending a full day at the pool. Maybe you like heading down for an hour hour or two, but then you're kind of good after that and you'd rather do more activities, games, sports, bike rentals, boat rentals, you know, all the fun things that Disney has to offer outside of the pools. One of the options, like I mentioned, is bike rentals. So the resorts that offer bike rentals are Caribbean Beach, Old Key West, Port Orleans, French Quarter and Riverside, Saratoga, Wilderness Lodge, and then the cabins and the campsites at Fort Wilderness. So those are the resorts that offer bike rentals. You also have the option for Surrey bikes as well. So these seat more people. So the resorts that offer this are the Boardwalk, Old Key West, Port Orleans, French Quarter, and Riverside, as well as Saratoga. So if you are staying at any of those resorts, bike rentals are an option. Another outdoor resort activity are the boat rentals. Now, this is different from the nighttime fireworks cruises. This is something that you can do during the day and you can book at any point. So the resorts that offer this are most of the resorts located right on the water. So you have the Yacht and Beach Club, the Contemporary, and the Grand Floridian. So all of those resorts have a marina where you can rent a boat for the day. Another fun option over at Fort Wilderness is kayak and canoe rentals. So maybe you're not wanting a large boat for your entire family, but looking for something a little smaller, maybe a little more affordable, the canoes and kayaks would be a really fun option as well. And speaking of Fort Wilderness, a few more things that this resort offers, and I should mention too that you do not have to be staying at Fort Wilderness to take advantage of these things. So if you are interested in renting a canoe or a kayak, 
you do not have to be staying here. You can just pop over for the day. So a few more things that this resort offers are horse-drawn carriages, you can go fishing here, and you can go horseback riding. So lots of fun outdoor activities, and this is a really fun way to spend the day at Fort Wilderness. Another fun resort activity if you have kids and if you are staying at a DVC resort, there is the community hall. So at all of the DVC properties, this is an area where your kids can go do crafts, there's games, there's usually a movie playing, there's all kinds of fun things going on in the community hall. So again, if you are staying at a DVC resort and you have small kids, this would be a really fun place to go spend a couple of hours and do some fun things in the air conditioning and get out of the heat. So that is another resort activity option for you. And a fun way to end your resort day is to head on over to your resort campfire. Now, this is located located at all moderate and deluxe resorts and the marshmallows are provided for free which is really fun but you can also purchase a full s'mores kit if that's something that you are interested in but this is a really fun way to cap the evening maybe you had an early dinner and usually these happen around sunset ish hour <laughs> you'll have to check your resort activity guide for exact times at each resorts and they all vary so just make sure to double check on the timing of it for sure but this is a really fun thing that all of the moderate and deluxe resorts offer. And then directly following the campfire is the movies under the stars. And this is something that all Disney resorts offer, value, moderate, and deluxe resorts. And the location varies, but typically they're around the resort pool, usually in that vicinity. <laughs> and again, there's a calendar and a schedule for the exact timing and what movies are gonna be shown each night. So it's a really fun way to end the night. Maybe you did the campfire and then you head on over and you know lay down a blanket, grab a chair, you know, whatever the setup is, and watch a Disney movie at your Disney resort. I mean, I can't think of a better way to watch a Disney movie than at a Disney resort. So that is a really, really fun way. Again, if you have kids, another great thing to do, but it's such a fun way to cap the night on a resort day. Now I can't talk about planning a resort day at Disney without talking about Animal Kingdom Lodge. There is so much to do. Obviously one of the best parts of Animal Kingdom Lodge is the animal viewing areas. You basically have a safari and all of the viewing locations right at your fingertips, but one really fun thing that Animal Kingdom Lodge is offering right now, they are doing painting classes. Now this happens every Wednesday and I believe there's a few different times that they offer, but make sure to check the resort activity page. Even if you're not staying here, you can still do this, but I believe they take walk-ups. It's not something you have to book far in advance. You can just decide day of if you wanna do this. Another resort activity at Animal Kingdom Lodge, I'm telling you, there is so much to do here. They have, what is it called exactly? I wrote it down. It's called Starlight Safari. So this is a nighttime safari experience where you use night vision to view the animals. And this happens at, I believe, 8.30 p.m. and 10 p.m. So both of those time slots are available. And this would be such a fun way to cap a resort day at Animal Kingdom Lodge. And again, you do not have to be staying here to take advantage of this. So definitely look into it if you are wanting something unique maybe a little bit different to factor into a resort day at Disney. All right, moving on, let's talk about resort hopping because this is another term that's used a lot, but it's a really great way to spend a resort day. So there are a lot of ways you could go about resort hopping. There's no wrong way <laughs> to do it, but I would say the two most popular ways to go about resort hopping is to do the monorail loop and stop off at all of those resorts or to go on the Skyliner and kind of do a Skyliner tour. So let's start with talking about the monorail loop. Now resort hopping and getting into resorts around the monorail loop can be tricky if you don't have a dining reservation or if you're not staying there. So what I recommend is wherever you're staying, take the bus to Magic Kingdom, from there, walk over to the Contemporary. It's about a five minute to five to 10 minute walk if you're walking slow or walking fast. And then from there, you can get on the monorail and enjoy all of the resorts. And then once you're done, you can get back on the bus at Magic Kingdom and head back to the resort you're staying at. 
So that's kind of the best way to go about seeing all of the resorts without having to worry about having a reservation or parking or anything like that. Just use the buses over at Magic Kingdom and walk over to the Contemporary. So what I typically do when I am monorail resort hopping is, like I mentioned, start over at the Contemporary. And whether you are wanting to experience some of the new lounges or restaurants or shopping, I mean, there's so much to do. It really just depends on what you're interested in. But one of my favorite places to start is at Steakhouse 71. And they have a really great bar and lounge area. If you just want to pop in for a drink, their Parmesan fries are just amazing. They are worth stopping in for as well. So if you want to do kind of a bar crawl type thing, that would be a great stop. And then head on over to the Polynesian would be your next stop. And from there, there are some really great spots to hang out. You can stop down and get a Dole Whip right outside the lobby on the first floor. You can also head over to Trader Sam's. Now, I believe Trader Sam's opens at 3 p.m. I'm pretty sure it's either 3 or 4 p.m. But you do want to show up early to make sure you get a table because seating is limited and it's just first come first serve. So you can't make a reservation, but it is worth the wait. So maybe go put your name in, wait however long, go grab a, you know, pineapple Dole Whip or another drink upstairs and then head back down to Trader Sam's because y'all, this place is so, so fun. It is a whole experience. So it is worth stopping off at, at the Polynesian. And then from there, you can hop back on the monorail and you will then head over to the Grand Floridian. And one of my favorite stops at the Grand Floridian is the Enchanted Rose. Now this is a very classy, fancy feeling lounge bar, but don't feel like you need to get all dressed up for it. You can definitely show up in just your normal everyday clothes, but it is a really fancy spot and it's a really neat location. It's themed to Beauty and the Beast. They have a lot of themed cocktails and their Parmesan fries are amazing here as well. I clearly love French fries apparently, <laughs> but it's a really great spot. And then of course you have all of the other incredible dining locations at the Grand Floridian. They have lots of shopping options, more than other resorts do. There's more boutique shopping options. There's also a basin location, which is where you can get bath bombs and body scrubs and lotions. It's really, really amazing. I just go in and wash my hands a hundred times so that I can use all their different body scrubs. <laughs> it's so nice in there. So it's definitely worth stopping off at the Grand Floridian to experience any of those things. And then you'll head back over to Magic Kingdom and you can either get off and get back on your bus back to your resort or you can just keep riding the monorail. I know as a kid, for me, the monorail was the attraction in and of itself. So if you have kids, just keep doing the monorail loop and they will have the most amazing time. <laughs> so that is how I do a monorail resort hopping day. So that is just one way to go about it. But let's move on to the Skyliner because there is another way that you could do some resort hopping as well. Now, resort hopping on the Skyliner is really fun too. So how I would start a day resort hopping on the Skyliner would be to take a bus over to Hollywood Studios. That way you don't have to worry about any kind of reservation or parking over at any of the resorts. Just head over to Hollywood Studios and hop on the Skyliner from there. And then from Hollywood Studios, you will head over to the Caribbean Beach Resort. Now, this is a really fun resort to walk around as well. You can kind of lounge over in some hammocks on the beach. You can head over to Banana Cabana, which is their bar and grill type area. So really, really fun atmosphere to stop off and walk around. And then from there, I would head over and do the Pop Century and Art of Animation stop. And this is another really fun area to get off and walk around and see all of the amazing theming over at this resort, especially at Art of Animation. You can see all of the Lion King, Little Mermaid, Finding Nemo, the car section. I mean, this looks like a Disney theme park in and of itself. I mean, it is just incredible, the theming here. So if you have little ones, this would be a stop that you absolutely have to make. And then from there, I would backtrack past Caribbean Beach Resort and stop off at the Riviera. Now, the Riviera is just, oh, it's beautiful. I could spend an entire day just 
being at this resort, just lounging and walking and just sitting and relaxing. It's just amazing. The atmosphere here is so relaxing. So their pool bar is Bar Riva. And again, you don't have to be staying here to eat or drink at any of these locations, but Bar Riva would be kind of an outdoor lounge type area. And then you also have their quick service location, which is Primo Piatto. I think that's how you pronounce it. And this would be a good one if you did want to stop off around around lunchtime and grab a quick bite to eat here. You could sit right out by the water at a table and just take in the atmosphere and just enjoy the resort. So this would be a really great stop as well. And then from the Riviera, you could either head back to Hollywood Studios or you could head over to Epcot. Now, if you did take the Epcot route, you don't actually have to go into Epcot. So I think a lot of people assume, oh, well, you know, we're not doing Epcot for the day, so we'll just skip that route. But instead of getting off the Skyliner and heading up the International Gateway entrance of Epcot, go the other direction and head towards the Yacht and Beach Club and the Boardwalk. And there is so much to see and do here. Now, this is where I would probably cap the night and you could spend the evening here and you could grab dinner at one of the many restaurant options over in this area. You also have the Swan and Dolphin right there as well. And there's some really great dining at those resorts as well. And there's Beaches and Cream if you wanted to stop for dessert and get a milkshake. There's also a few different bar and lounge locations over on the boardwalk. So lots of options here, lots of things to do. You can actually see the fireworks over from the boardwalk. I wouldn't say it's the best view, but it's a way that you can see the fireworks and kind of hang around a little bit later in the evening. And then head back on the Skyliner over to Hollywood Studios and catch your bus back to your resort. Or you could even call an Uber from wherever you are. If you're over at the boardwalk or the Yacht and Beach Club, you could absolutely just take a Lyft or an Uber back to your resort if that would be easier and kind of skip the Skyliner hassle at the end of the evening. But there's a few different ways you could end your night there. So just know there's a couple options. So that is how I would do a Skyliner resort hopping day. And you can make, again, you can make a full day out of it. It doesn't have to be just a quick, you know, get on the Skyliner and get off. So you can really make it whatever you want to make it. But like I mentioned, there are so many ways you can do a resort hopping day. This is just one of many examples. Another way to spend a resort hopping day, I wanted to throw this in here really quick, but if you are staying at Disney between Thanksgiving and New Year's, you will get to experience the beautiful Christmas decorations that Disney puts up. So maybe you create your own resort hopping day and make up a Christmas tree resort tour and you can see all of the Christmas decorations at the Disney resorts and let that be kind of the focus of your resort hopping day. So again, just another example of all of the many ways you could spend a resort hopping day depending on what time of year you're staying. <laughs> all right, well, that is it. I hope this gave you some helpful ideas for or how to plan the perfect Disney Resort day. Let me know down in the comments below how you typically plan out a Disney rest day. I would love to hear what you typically do. So thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to give this video a thumbs up and make sure that you are subscribed if you're not already and I will see you in my next one. Bye.